Hello, I'm Joshua Farnsworth, and welcome to my workshop and my traditional woodworking school here in Earliesville, Virginia. Today I wanted to talk about uh, the anatomy of a table, how a table fits together, uh, specifically the anatomy of an end table with a drawer. Uh, and the reason I want to talk about this is because I, I did a little digging and I noticed that there is not much information out there. You know, a lot of the books and DVDs don't go into detail on how everything fits together. Uh, so I wanted to share that with you. And I'm going to, to share that with you uh, on some end tables that I recently built out of some quarter sawn white oak. Uh, you might remember a video I did a couple years ago, a big tree that fell down in Charlottesville, Virginia, and uh, a friend and friend of mine uh, and I, uh, Todd Horn, milled it up on a bandsaw mill. Uh, so it was a really fun project, uh, beautiful, beautiful wood. And uh, I just kind of, I'm not going to go into a lot of detail about how to build a table uh, because that would take hours to a video to show you. But I just wanted to, to show you just here in a few minutes how everything fits together so it will make uh, con conceptual sense to you. Uh, so let's get started. This table fits together with tenons that are on the aprons and they're inserted into mortises which are cut into the four legs. So the rear tenons are beveled to allow them to clear each other inside the mortise. The rear legs, of course, have two mortises. The front two legs, however, are different. Like the rear legs, they have mortises that accept the apron tenons, but on the interior faces of these legs are mortises that are cut to provide an opening for the drawer. The bottom drawer rail uses a double tenon, uh, as you can see here. and the top drawer rail uses a dovetail that's lapped into the top of the leg. The dovetail rail sits proud of the top of the leg so it can be planed down later. But don't worry if your rail dovetail looks ugly like mine. <laughs> they'll, be, they'll be covered with the tabletop later. For aesthetic purposes, I set my rails back about a sixteenth of an inch from the front of the legs. Sometimes I get a little too antsy and want to see what the wood grain looks like, so I'll wipe some mineral spirits on it. But don't worry, it'll dry very quickly and it, it won't cause any harm to your wood. So now let's talk about legs. I love the look of tapered legs, but you can also use turned legs or tapered legs with turnings on them or even straight legs. So the taper usually stops just a few inches down from the drawer rails. After the table is glued up, it's time to make custom spacers or doublers as some people call them. So these spacers are made of secondary wood like poplar or pine, poplar in this case, and they're made to be flush with the legs. So these can be permanently attached with wood glue and you don't even need screws or nails or anything. The glue's plenty strong. It just is a way to keep the drawers from moving side to side. Just take extra caution when gluing and clamping up to make sure that they don't shift because they have a tendency to do that. You can see here after the glue is dried, uh, they're in place. And now over the top of those, you put runners on the bottoms for the drawer to slide along and kickers on the tops to keep the drawer tight against the runners. So there's a variety of methods for attaching table tops. But one way is to cut shallow mortises into the rear apron and also into the side kickers and the front rail and make wooden buttons that hold the table top tight while allowing seasonal wood movement or else you don't, you're going to have a table that splits. So before the table frame is glued up, I usually chisel out the button mortises with the quarter inch chisel. You can see these buttons when they're finished, you set a screw in them. I'm using some traditional looking screws and you screw it down and it tightens the top to the aprons or uh, on the sides it, it uh, is tightening them to the kickers. So here's what it looks like with the tabletop on. I actually think that a sign of craftsmanship is to use a thicker tabletop and bevel the top like you see here. Uh, and I do that with a hand plane. So let's move on to the drawers. It's pretty straightforward. There's a drawer front and drawer sides with grooves plowed into them to allow the drawer bottom. And we use a half blind dovetail to 
uh, hold the drawer sides into the drawer front, as you can see here. And then there's a drawer back, which you use as through dovetails, and you can see that it's shorter so that the drawer can hang out the back to allow for expansion. I like to put the side and then the back on and then the other side. And that's just how it fits fits in better. And don't use a hammer but it's to set these in. But before you glue it up, you're going to put it together to do some test fitting. That looks pretty good. Uh, and you can see here, here's another shot of the grooves, how they line up. That allows for the drawer bottom. And that's the drawer bottom is going to go on last. So we just leave that out. And those, uh, there's a custom drawer pole that I built with a mortise. Don't look too closely. I tore out some of the grain, but you can do different kinds of drawer poles. So then the drawer is glued up, taking extreme caution to make sure the drawers are square. And I use a block plane to actually bevel the top of the drawer sides to prevent dings from showing up on the sides. So the drawer should fit tight at this point prior to fitting the drawer. The drawer fitting process includes creating a slight space above and below the drawer front called a reveal. And this prevents the drawer from hanging up and it's also for aesthetic purposes. Drawer stops are used to stop the drawer from going too far into the table. And I simply glue little blocks on the the lower front rail, but you can screw them down and nail them down if are so inclined. And here's how they look before they got fumed. So I actually put them in a fuming tent and fumed them with ammonia, which I'll cover in the following video. You can see they turn out kind of gray, but once the finish goes on them, they just look incredibly beautiful. You can see that quarter sawn white oak figure just pop. There's actually a recipe that I'll put on the accompanying blog post for a good finish that penetrates and but is still protective. At this point, I also put a few coats of thin de-wax shellac on the interior parts of the drawer. You don't have to do this, but it can help. I then add a drawer bottom. So the bottom's grain, as you can see, runs side to side, which means the wood will move front to back. That's why the drawer back is kept out of the way. The drawer bottom is beveled with a hand plane and then attached to the drawer bottom with a screw. So the screw hole in the drawer bottom is slightly larger than the screw so that seasonal wood movement won't destroy the drawer. Now you can see we have a beautiful custom built drawer that fits perfectly into the end table. You can see here that this end table is finished and just has a really nice sheen to it. And trying out the drawer, you can see that it closes tight, but not too tight and not too loose. So I hope this video has answered some of the questions that you may have about how drawers and how tables fit together. And I'm actually gonna use these end tables or nightstands in the next video that I release. It'll be a video about how to fume white oak furniture with ammonia. Uh, this is like a commercial industrial grade ammonia as opposed to the stuff that you can just buy at a hardware store that I did last time. So keep your eyes open for that video and leave any comments or questions you have and make sure you visit woodandshop.com and check out my store because I've got a lot of DVDs and uh, woodworking t-shirts and other things that you can check out there. So thanks for watching. This is Joshua Farnsworth. If you're interested in learning traditional woodworking with hand tools, visit my website at woodandshop.com where you can find free video tutorials, workshop tours of amazing traditional woodworkers, and tool buying guides. You can ask questions and share your projects with thousands of woodworkers on my free traditional woodworking forum. Make sure you subscribe to my regular blog posts and also check out my 10 steps for getting started in traditional woodworking. Enjoy!